The most immediate part of the Heisenberg to understand is the operator section. If you're familiar with waveforms on the pulverisateur, think of operator A, B, C, and D as OSC1, OSC2, OSC3, and so on. If you open the wave section, you will see there is a variety of different waveform types available for you to choose from. These will provide you with a basic timbre for your operator. Beside that, we have semitones which enable you to modify the frequency in intervals, octaves, and fractions of intervals. If you don't know what an interval is, it's basically a number of keys up on your keyboard relative to your root key. Again, the same thing on the pulverisateur, just instead of cents and octaves, we have semitones. For reference, semitones are in increments of 1, and octaves are in increments of 12. Besides semitones, we have offset, which seems to act in a manner similar to detuning. Next to that, we also have pitch, which is where you can assign a pitch envelope to the operator. Since all of the envelopes in the Heisenberg are repeatable, you can also create a vibrato effect, similar to assigning the LFO section to OSC1, OSC2, OSC3, etc. on the pulverisateur. A, B, C, and D represents which operator you're using the signal of to modify the sound. If you use other operators, it gives the sound a kind of grit or rasp to it the higher you go. If you modulate the oscillator with itself, you create a feedback loop which generates noise. A very straightforward section, you have operator panning and volume. You could use panning to spread your sound, volume to adjust the basic maximum value of the sound, or it's mixed with other operators. Here's one of the interesting parts of the synthesizer. The amplitude modulation section essentially gives you a way to route the Heisenberg's envelopes and low frequency oscillators and map them to volume. Sadly, it doesn't look like there's too many routing options, such as running an LFO through an LFO, but nonetheless, there's still a fair deal you can do here. For modulation sources, we have three ADSR envelopes, two LFOs, and velocity tracking. For modulation destinations, we have the operator volumes and main filter. By clicking in the squares, you set the modulation amount for a source to destination. For example, if you increase LFO 1 to 100 on operator A, you are mapping the LFO to volume on it 100%. So on a basic level, you can easily make tremolo effects, or sounds which slowly weave in or out. You basically can make the same thing as the two envelopes on the Pulver Satur by using the main envelope on your Heisenberg for volume envelope and either envelope 1 or 2 in the filter mod section. This number in the mod matrix essentially is the same thing as the depth knob. The 
Lastly, we have velocity tracking, which is basically just altering the parameter, either filter cutoff or operator volume with the note levels in the piano roll. This may be helpful to some in that it's a lot easier to now visualize the effects of an envelope. You have attack, which is sound fade in time, decay, which is sound fade out time, Sustain, which is a steady level after fade out. And release, which is sound fade out time after you let go of the note. Interestingly, interestingly, <laughs> fuck. interestingly, to the right of each envelope, we have two buttons, tempo sync and decay loop. Tempo sync lets you control the stage time in musical timing instead of milliseconds. So you could map the timing of the sound changes in whole notes or half notes, for example. You can see when you turn this on, the tooltip displays your quantization amount instead of millisecond time. To relate this, the values are similar to the quantization values in the timeline. Next we have Decay Loop. This enables you to basically turn the envelope into an LFO. You can leave the tempo sick off to have a free running LFO, or turn it on to have a quantized LFO. However, it can take a little messing around to get the LFO timed correctly and behaving in the timing you want. And you should also remember envelopes trigger on each note. So even if you have tempo sync off, the LFO will reset accordingly. Once you've made your envelope or hybrid LFO, you can route it in the mod matrix. You will notice there is also a pitch envelope. It has all the same basic features except there is a semitone amount control. You can also further modify the semitones by clicking on the square nodes in the window. Turn on Decay Loop to give yourself a vibrato effect. The Heisenberg has two LFOs. Each LFO has a waveform control, phase offset, timing control, fade in time, time sync, and restart. By clicking on the wave, interestingly, you can select any of the Heisenberg's many oscillators to use as the LFO. 
Next, you can alter the LFO speed with the rate column. Just like the envelopes, you can turn tempo sync on or off for quantization values. You also have the restart button, which resets the LFO each time you press a note. Fade in time is kind of like an attack stage for your envelope to reach full values. Lastly, you have phase offset, which changes the start point of the LFO waveform. The filter section is fairly straightforward. The circle node in the box represents your filter cutoff on the horizontal axis and filter resonance on the vertical axis. You can also switch between high pass mode, low pass mode, and mixed mode with a little slider. As well, you can change the filter pull values, that is, the sharpness of the filter effect, with the numbers 12, 24, 36, and 48. The filter runs across the whole mix and can be modified in the filter mod section in the mod matrix. The last thing we will look at is the main controls. Firstly, we have the note box. This allows us to change synth behavior. You can switch between only letting single notes play and multiple notes play by using mono and poly respectively. Polyphonic synthesizers allow you to play multiple notes at once. So why would you want to use mono and limit yourself to only one? Well, for example, if you set an envelope to a long release, it will reset each time a new note is played as opposed to overlapping over other notes. This is useful for bass patches because you can have a long release time without muddying up your sound. There is also legato, which lets notes overlap each other. Secondly is unison. You can set it to two, three, or four. Basically, this thickens your sound. You can detune the effect with the detune knob and adjust the stereo wideness with the spread knob. Just keep in mind, you need to have unison set to one of the values in order for these controls to have an effect. Next, we have Portamento. It makes the pitch bend from note to note pretty basic. Also, there is Tune, which lets you modify the master synth tuning. Last, but not least, we have the Velocity knob, which controls the velocity tracking over the whole synthesizer. Interestingly, if you turn this off, it allows you to route velocity tracking to the filter and use the piano roll velocities 
to control the filter cutoff instead of the note volume. So that does it for my overview of the Heisenberg. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel. It takes time to write and put these videos together. As well, you can find me on Facebook for updates on my latest music and tutorials. Just follow the link on my channel page. This is Electro, signing out.